Good day, everyone. My name is Yiming Chen from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. I'm glad to give a speech in IRAS 2020. This is related to our recent research on robotics and vision application for kitchen food automation. Robots have been used in food and beverage industry for quite some time for mass production. However, new robots are now developed for more scenarios such as food delivery, robotic waiter. Robotic bartender, robots making noodles and breakfast and dishes in the kitchen. However, these food making robots are generally robotic systems pre-programmed to fetch ingredients, sauce, food items, and cook in a fixed manner. In terms of the speed, intelligence, complexity of the manual, they they are still far from expectations. Our target research work is to automate the. Kitchen work that currently require lots of manpower. The key activities carrying out in the kitchen can be categorized as follows: first, preparation of food like chopping, dicing, slicing, etc.; second, cooking food like stirring, frying, boiling, etc.; and third, setting and assembling the food. Not only these processes are complex. The number and type of ingredients and food items are also huge. Hence, any meaningful automation in the kitchen would be able to reduce the reliance of manpower. Such kitchen food handling automation can be seen in a number of scenarios. For example, in the kitchen of catering services, the central kitchen for restaurant chains, fast food outlets, regular restaurant kitchens, food store, and Hot pot or barbecue type restaurants, where the staff preparing the raw items and ingredients, and the customers do the cooking themselves. Although the scenario for food automation are many, they are far more challenging than manufacturing automation. The challenges in automating food handling in a kitchen are large variety of food items. Irregular shape and the textures, unlike industry parts, hygiene of the environment, food safety due to introduction of automated equipment such as robot need to use food grade lubricants, contact material property to ensure food safety requirements, protocols for disinfection, and also quality assurance. As automation equipment is expensive. And need time to adjust and change. The return of investment (ROI) would only be justifiable for preparing food in large quantity and less variety. This slide showed a retort tray meal production kitchen for the airlines deployed in the catering center. Currently, lots of fixed automation equipment are used. There are automated rice meat dispensing machines developed by ourselves. Other readily available equipment such as Sauce dispensing machines, sterilization machines, are used together to form a production line. The disadvantage of such setup is its inflexibility with frequent changes in food quantity and manuals. With advancement of computer vision, AI techniques, and lower hardware cost, we are able to deal with automated food handling in a number of new ways. First, robot equipped with 3D vision and machine learning techniques for low-volume, high-mix food production. Second, customized intelligent automation with 3D vision for fast manual changeover. Third, human-robot collaboration in space-constrained kitchen, like this bento preparation robot in Japan. In our research group. We had done many interesting object handling projects using robot, 3D vision, and machine learning techniques, from e-commerce grocery picking, warehouse box picking, hospital logistic, from linen picking, last mile picking in pharmacy, and surgical tool cleaning, inspection, and packaging. In order to use robot to perform the item picking tasks like human do. In the study of intelligent item picking, we adopt a system approach by selection of appropriate sensing modes, 
machine learning techniques, and grouper design based on the task requirements. This system approach is very similar to humans' execution process of such picking tasks. Here is a table to compare the types and attributes of the object we have handled against the food items. Objects ranging from grocery boxes to medical supplies and food, all having their characteristic to be addressed by either sensing devices, machine learning method, and also gripper design for regular and irregular shape items, rigid and soft object, and surface textures. Thus, we can see how food items are set apart from the others in the shape, color, hardness, texture, and varieties. Here we show you some of our past works. Um, since 2015, we attended the Amazon Picking Challenge 2017 as well. Um, both are e-commerce grocery picking uh, with the fixed and also modified environment. And we are also uh, participating in the DHL challenge to pick the warehouse boxes. And lastly, the um, IROS uh, mobile manipulation hackathon. This is a reverse problem that we're using PAL robot along with our um, um, algorithm to do stowing of the object from the bin back to the shelf with, for the uh, rearranging and sorting the, the, uh, the convenience store. Here is the hospital picking work that we have done from linen picking without um, any uh, package to some uh, plastic packaging on the uh, linen. Um, then in this case, we're using different type of uh, uh, factor to achieve the job, as well as the, uh, the hospital pharmacy uh, picking for the last mile solution from the medicine dispensing machine to the labeling machines. And finally, that's the surgical tool um, picking as well as a sorting. Um, in this case, those surgical tools are uh, soiled one after the uh, surgery that uh, need the cleaning. Prior to the cleaning, they need to sort it out. So in this case, the challenge is that the, um, the texture and the material of the surgical tool and the tray, they are all stainless steel. Uh, so identification become a very challenging work. In 2019, our National Robotic Program Office launched a project on hybrid robotic gripper in order to build up our capability in soft robotics research. Along the way, we decided to use automated food assembly of in-flight catering menus as an application demonstration. We work with sets to refine the technology for assembling meals for patients, healthcare staff, and volunteers in the hospitals during this COVID-19 situation. The soft robotic gripper technology in our uh, system allow us to delicately manipulate food items and achieve automated food assembly unlike traditional hard robotic gripper. In this program, we have a number of tasks below. First is reconfigurable hybrid gripper that is used to manipulate food items with a wide range of shape and sizes. Second is the embedded the tactile sensor into the soft material that will be able to help to identify the best picking positions and also the grass configuration. And then there are also study on the different kind of gripper postures to do uh, scooping, pinching, and also grasping. And finally, we are also working on um, the uh, integrated vision system that allow the automating food processing and packaging altogether. The whole program involving uh, Nanyang Technological University, National University of Singapore, Singapore University of Technology Design, and A-Star Research Institute. This video show our colleagues in NUS designing the reconfigurable hybrid grippers that can handle different kind of food items from very um, rigid item to uh, very soft or fragile items such as tofu. Currently, 
it shows only the capability of the gripper without a uh, vision system it's not at the integration level but you can see that it can also handle a large um, a loose large loose item like a uh, noodles padding so this is elastic objects the sleeve here uh, do have the uh, food grade um, uh, property and the gripper has the strength that will be able to pick in other orientation than the vertical direction like this uh, scooping motion We also have colleagues in SUDD to design integrated uh, fabrication of multiple soft materials in order to change the uh, soft finger properties um, by customization. We also have people working on soft tactile sensors um, so that uh, it will be directly embedded into the soft material and soft finger so uh, it will be able to grasp the object and sense that autonomously and definitely we also have people working on the mechanical property of this this soft robot material to make the grasping to be more stable and reliable in this project our task is to design the vision system as well as system integration we start off with a um, uh, simple breakfast menu because um, the flight catering menu normally will have a very limited set of food and they won't change um, very often so this will be a good starting point um, the requirement is to look at the potato omelette broccoli and sausage um, uh, picking using the soft gripper along with the vision feedback but it must be under a fast movement uh, we need to complete the whole uh, casserole picking within 15 seconds so this is the actual setting in the flat kitchen normally uh, one menu will have three things the starch item which is could be rice noodle but spaghetti or even potato and then there will be a protein item which means the meat or fish and a vegetable item so normally the food will be prepared in a very um, large utensils in large quantity and then the chef will prepare a sample which is the as shown you here in the upper right and then all other workers will prepare and assemble every casserole according to this sample specific uh, uh, ethnic groups with small quantity like Japanese kosher vegetarian hala uh, food will be prepared separately yeah. after each tray is set then they will put on a big table according to the, the different flights and the quality insurance check is done by human visually uh, so they can see all the prepared the casseroles on the table and very easy to add, spot the errors that under such kind of uh, uh, arrangement this system consists of a Delta robot frequently used in food industry for its speed and also working envelope we have two conveyor belts going in and out of robot work cell the input conveyor belt holds cooked food in large trays the output conveyor belt holds the meal casseroles at both sides we have the RGBD cameras to be able to identify the food items the configuration of the system is as follows we have a system controller running the visual module in ROS the controller is linked with camera for identification learning and robot motion control after coordinates of the target have been identified they are sent to the robot controller for activation this controller also activates the grippers motion either via pneumatic valves or motors 
Delta Robot does not have ROS support. So all of the motion code is in the native ABB language called Rapid. The gripper is interchangeable so that we can test various self-developed and commercial ones. Note that the robot's payload is 3 kg. This slide shows how the vision system works. The camera uses structure light and RGD sensors to generate RGBD data. The depth server uses the point cloud component of the data to determine the location of the highest food item. This highest item will be picked first. The object detector uses the RGB component to segment individual items and determine the target pose. The pose server combines this to recommend the target and provide the 3D coordinates. Each scan takes about two seconds and it triggered in synchronization by the robot controller. This makes sure that the Delta robot does not block the sensor during scanning. For convenience, our initial tests were first made with fake food that you see on the left. You can see that there are sausages, tomatoes, broccoli, and potatoes. On the right side, the result of the vision module is shown. First, you can see the bounding boxes highlighting the detected food items with pose data. At the bottom right, we can note that the false color image based on the depth data. From these pictures, we can appreciate that both type of the results are essential for this application. Although fake food are convenient, they are not good replacement for real foods in some aspects. First, the optical characteristic may not match real foods. The shining, especially on fake potatoes, result in noisy depth data. Second, their weight and surface texture make them unnecessarily difficult to pick. For example, the fake potatoes and broccoli made with rubber are rigid and heavy while the fake potatoes are very light and elastic. To progress, we could of course have fine-tuned our vision and robot modules. This may have helped us to pick the fake foods reliably. But since our real objective is to pick real food, we hope to switch to use real food in our experiments. During the transition, we tested the system's ability to recognize real food based on the vision algorithm developed from our original dataset of fake food images. On this side, we see the side-by-side -side comparison of fake and real food. We can note that the fake and real foods are similar but not identical in appearance. We found that the vision module is still able to accurately provide the pose and depth information. However, to ensure that the object recognition is robust, we retrain the algorithm using a new data set of images of real foods, which our current system is using. We also begin the training of a new food item which was the omelette. So here we can see the vision module functioning with the new algorithm and also the result from applying training images of the omelette. This new algorithm is able to detect the food items like the previous one. And it is also similarly able to recommend targets for the Delta robot to pick. One factor we noticed is that the omelette cubes have to be spaced apart. If we put them in a pile, the cubes will fall apart when the gripper push down on the pile. So this is the full system assembling the meals. You may notice that the bright flashes on the left side, that is the camera using structured light to generate the point cloud data. At this time, we use about 18 seconds to complete each meal. The Delta robot is able to achieve much higher speed than what is shown here, but we currently limit the robot acceleration to less than 20% of its full capability. If the acceleration is high, the food will not stay on the gripper.
the grouper may also be damaged. Our goal is to constantly improve our algorithm and keep the robot constantly moving, thereby achieving higher efficiency. The robot pauses sometimes for the camera to scan the scene. Multiple scans are needed because the gripper disturbed items when picking. Not all picks are successful. Sometimes the food items are not properly picked or placed resulting in errors. In this video, we will see an error occur with the final dish and we can see the error handling aspect of the system. The vision algorithm uses camera at the output side to check the casserole dishes for the food items each dish should have. The robot will repick any items which are missing before the meal moving out from the work cell. Now we are looking at the view from both input and output cameras. We can see the sampling from each of the camera has to be synchronized so that the robot does not obstruct the image. I'm ending my talk here with the following points. Here we present the work in automation of food handling for catering kitchen. This is a high density clutter environment picking setup. The item we're dealing with are variable geometry, surface texture, and the color of the same item. And this is a high speed and high throughput uh, setup for better return of investment, which is suitable for centralized kitchen, but may, may not be for the small and isolated kitchen setup. The learning points we have from fake and uh, real food uh, item experiments are the followings. Fake food are convenient and economical, but they are partially useful for training the, the real uh, vision algorithm and thus the transition to real food and fine tuning for the final automation uh, outcome will be necessary. Looking ahead, we are also need to look at uh, um, food assembly uh, involving those granular or loose food items such as rice or noodle and also food with gravy. And we also need the innovative gripper design to be able to pick up more type of foods and also reduce the error while picking. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. If you have any uh, comments and uh, suggestions, please contact me through email. Hopefully, in the future, we may have some research collaboration in this area.